Going back to 1982, can KISS recover from what was music from the Elder? Next on Heels and Quads. Okay. Welcome back, Heels and Quads Media here on YouTube. I'm Tommy, and I'm back with number two of my KISS rankings, including the 1978 solo albums. We're almost to the end of this, and I've already put a poll up on the community tab. So subscribe, like, comment, and also head over there and vote. What band should I do next? It's between Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, Van Halen, and... Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Which one of these is not like the other, right? But go there, check out the link in the description, head over to our website. There you'll find the link to our Patreon page and all of our social media. So coming up right now, let's go back to 1982. The last, what we thought was the last, of Kiss and Makeup. I'll see you on the other side. At number two, Creatures of the Night, released October 25th, 1982. The band was in an interesting spot in their career. Peter leaving two years prior, and Ace on his way out the door, and not playing on this album at all, much like Peter with Unmasked. Eric Carr was clearly hungry to really show his talents, having only been heard behind the kit on the previous album, Music from the Elder, which obviously was a concept record and not well received by the fans, and no tour only really appearing on TV in the States other than the Palladium show in 1980 to introduce Eric Carr. So this was not only his opportunity, but the band's chance to show they could still rock. Even though future guitarist Vinny Vincent plays on six tracks, this to me feels like a Frankenstein album in a way. But, and I've used this word a ton, hindsight, in hindsight, I don't think the masses gave this one a proper chance. This album really is a heavy album. They're heaviest to that point, and sound-wise probably of their career. You can argue Revenge and Carnival of Souls, but I don't think so. The drum sound on this album is influential and is the reason the Dr. Feelgood album from Motley Crue has the sound it does. I think Michael James Jackson should be held in the same regard as Eddie Kramer and Bob Ezrin as far as the elite producers for KISS, because he could be the one that saved KISS, not Vinnie Vincent. Even the stuff he helped with on Killers, for the most part, is pretty tight. With the passing of Neil Bogart, the departure of Bill Coin, and of course, Ace leaving the band, despite appearing in promotional material, the press conference, interviews, and even the video for I Love It Loud, and the cover, the band was at a crossroads. While the tour didn't do well, the sound carried on into the band's next, which would be their first without makeup, lick it up. But on a personal note, the imagery, sound, and songs here make this one, other than the original lineup, my absolute favorite. And that's why it lands here at number two. It's popular amongst fans now, but I think it's just a shame more people weren't locked in back then. But, I mean, I understand why, after Unmasked and The Elder. Least favorite song? Again, this is tough. I mean, it is my second favorite album from my favorite band. I love all these songs. I could pick I Love It Loud here, but that's not fair because I actually love the video and I like the studio version. I'm just tired of hearing it live. I could pick I Still Love You. It's a ballad, but I won't. That song rules and not one person can tell me the unplugged version isn't peak Super Paul vocalist extraordinaire. War Machine? No, that song kicks serious ass. So much so, I had a junior high band named after it. I'll go with Keep Me Coming here. I really like this song. I'm only putting it here because I have to pick something. And the chorus is just kind of non-existent, which is fine because the whole song is catchy. Favorite song? It's like picking your favorite child. I'm going with Saint and Sinner. So Its tone and timing is very Love Gun musically. Not comparing, but if you want to argue, by all means, let me know in the comments. But listen to it.
But for Gene, I think it's very different. I love how high the bass is in the mix. It's got that brooding demon feel that we had been missing for years, and vocally, Gene really sings with a little extra passion in his vocals. And seems that he's really trying something different on this track. I love it. Honorable mention, Killer. I could pick Creatures of the Night here, the song, so I'll just say this, that song kicks ass, but I feel it gets enough love from the fans already. So I'm trying to spread it around here. I really dig the riff and Killer. Very 76 to 78 Gene vocally. It sucks that Paul doesn't play on it, but as far as the guitar sound, this sound is killer. Plus Eric's drum, Gene's bass so heavy and high in the mix, it's killer. There it was from 1982, Creatures of the Night. Some people say this is their favorite Kiss album. Some people hate this album for some reason. I don't know. But sonically, it's absolute bombast. Boncos, bananas. Eric Carr's drum sound is amazing. I think that kind of helps make this record what it was. And obviously, I mean, I know, I don't think he saved Kiss, but Vinnie Vincent's guitar playing on this record is absolutely freaking amazing. So what do you think? Where do you rank Creatures of the Night on your list? Is it too high on mine? Is it too low? Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. And of course, the link in the description takes you to our website, merch, Patreon link, all social media links. And I'll see you later for number one. Have you figured it out yet? I'll see you next time. We're creatures of the night.